Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Weekly GCAP, the only source you'll ever need to catch up on all the gaming news from the last week. We have a lot to get through today, but before that, I upload these videos every single Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern, so if you want to catch them as soon as they go up, well, then now you know when to tune in. For our first story, the Coalition is officially working on Gear 6. The Coalition are the ones that took over the Gears franchise after Gears of War 3, so think Gears Tactics, Gears 4, Gears 5. This coming from Jeff Grubb saying the studio is now going to move on fully to Gear 6. I say now it has likely moved on to Gear 6 in full over the course of the last year, but definitely that will be their next game. I can't even lie, in terms of the Gears of War series, I haven't really played any of them since Gears of War 3. I dabbled in a bit of Gears 5 multiplayer, and that one PvE mode they had was pretty fun, but outside of that, I haven't played any of the campaigns since Gears of War Judgment, so I'm pretty excited to see what they whip up with Gears 6. I think I might need to go back and actually play Gears 4 and Gears 5 so I can get prepared for that. Anyway, on to our next story. Another game is shutting down, I swear. We talked about like five or six games that got shut down and canceled last week, and well, here Here's another one. This one being Crossfire X. This game did not come out that long ago at all. I believe it's only been on the market for like maybe a year or two tops. I'll just read what they said directly. Quote, it is with the deepest regret that we are informing you of our decision to end support for Crossfire X on May 18th, 2023. Since the launch of the game, we have worked tirelessly to bring it to a point where we can all be proud. And throughout it all, we have had the honor and pleasure of supporting our players. Coming to this decision was not easy. However, we can proudly say that our players have been amazingly active, passionate, and enthusiastic and working with us to create a game that would be fun and enjoyable by all. We want to thank each and every one of our players for playing Crossfire X and being a part of this journey with us. And then below that, they listed some changes that will be happening to the game. So first, all sales on the Xbox Store will be halted. Second, there will be no new content added to the game. No new maps, modes, camos, etc. Third, purchases made within the last 14 days as of February 3rd, 2023 are eligible for a refund. And then finally, our game servers will close on May 18th, 2023 for the final time. But until then, you will be able to enjoy all previously purchased purchased and unlocked in-game content. And below that, they link to an FAQ answering more questions people may have, and then they go on to say, we hope that you will be able to enjoy Crossfire X until the service ends, and we will always be grateful for your support. Thank you for everything. Sincerely, Crossfire X team. So obviously, it's always sad seeing a game to a close, especially a game like this, considering the fact that there was a single-player campaign. This game was a bit of a strange one, because the multiplayer was handled by one dev team on a different engine, and then the single-player was developed by another dev team on a different engine. Yeah, I don't know. This game has always just been a little weird in my eyes. I've never honestly even played it. All I know is that review-wise, it got bombed. Commercially, it didn't do that well. Like I said, it's obviously always sad seeing a game come to a close, especially when you consider just how much time goes into making a game. It takes literal years to get these games made, and then they get out. And for example, like Rumbleverse last week, it was out for maybe, what, six or seven months, and now it's just gone. All that hard work that went into the game by all the devs, it's just, it's gone to time forever now. The worst part about these live service games is there is literally no way to present Preserve these games. As soon as the servers go offline, that's it. Nobody will ever be able to play it again. It's not like some other games where if there's some single player elements or if it had a physical release, like it still gets preserved in that sense. But when it comes to these live service games, the only way you can preserve a game like this is, for example, if somebody made YouTube videos on it or if there's any like saved Twitch VODs of it. Outside of content like that, though, there is no way to preserve these games and actually play them once the servers go offline. It's just, it's really sad. At the time of me recording this, the game is still on Game Pass. So if you never tried the game before, and if you really want to give it a shot, want to try the campaign, multiplayer, whatever, now is definitely the time to do it. Get on your Xbox, get on your PC, download it, give it a shot now because it won't be up for much longer. And before we go into the next story, I wanted to cover the games that are coming to Game Pass this month. Those being Atomic Heart, Madden NFL 23, SD Gundam Battle Alliance, Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, City Skylines Remastered for the Series S and the Series X, and Shadow Warrior 3 Definitive Edition. It's cool seeing Shadow Warrior 3 finally going to the Xbox. I remember playing it on launch day last year. I remember the game was added March first to the PS Now service when that was still a thing. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, I beat it that same day. I beat it in like a sitting, but I totally recommend it. I, it's amazing that you guys are gonna be able to finally experience this one. On to our next story, Hogwarts Legacy, well, it's actually releasing the day that you guys are seeing this video, but due to an early release with pre-order bonuses and review codes going out early, people have been able to get the reviews out on the game, have been able to play the game, and oh man, it is so good seeing this game do as well as it is. So if we take a look over at Metacritic, right now it is sitting at an 86 from the critic reviews and then a 9.0 user score, which I don't think I need to tell you. That's pretty good. Unless you've been living under a rock, then you know about the controversy that was surrounding this game before it came out, which was utterly stupid. We're not going to talk about it here for, you know, controversy reasons. All I'm going to say on the matter is play whatever you want and don't let the internet tell you otherwise. But yeah, so far the reviews have been nothing but positive about this game. Everybody's absolutely loving it. And in fact, Hogwarts Legacy broke a Twitch record and it reached over 1.3 million concurrent views 
viewers on Twitch. Yeah, needless to say, the game isn't even out yet and it's already breaking records. I think this one's gonna be a bit of a hit. I'd love to hear from you guys though. Have you played the game? What do you think of it so far? Next up, Xbox has announced the new Stella controller. This is following up their Aqua Shift and Lunar Shift line of controllers. This is retailing for $69.99 and basically the controller, I don't think there's really anything special to it besides the color scheme, but for what it is, the color scheme is pretty cool. It's got like this purplish and bluish hue to it. I'll put a picture up on screen. It looks really freaking sick. So again, if you guys are interested in picking this one up, it's called the Stella Shift. Normally, I don't pick up special edition controllers, but I'm pretty tempted to get this one. Next up, I don't think this one is actually confirmed yet, but it appears that Ubisoft Plus may be coming to Xbox. And if you don't know what Ubisoft Plus is, it's essentially like a Game Pass or an EA Play equivalent for Ubisoft games. Just real quick, we'll run down like a list of the games that are on Ubisoft Plus so you know what to expect if it actually does end up coming to Xbox. Far Cry, Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed, South Park, The Crew, Tom Clancy's Division slash Ghost Recon games, The Trials Motorbike games, Rayman, Riders Republic, Immortals Phoenix Rising, For Honor, Scott Pilgrim, which is a very underrated game, by the way, Steep, Uno, Monopoly, and much more. You know, it's a subscription service, so games are always being added to it. I honestly wasn't expecting this, considering I thought Ubisoft was kind of like in cahoots with Sony there for a bit with how many Ubisoft games were getting added to the PS Plus subscription service. But hey, if Ubisoft Plus ends up getting added to Xbox Game Pass or like some sort of tier for Xbox Game Pass, maybe, then that'll just add even more value to that subscription service. Now, this next story I'm actually really interested in, considering that I've always been a huge Hot Wheels fan. This being a new game called Hot Wheels Rift Rally. The tagline on the site for the game being race Hot Wheels and mixed reality. It's like an augmented slash mixed reality kind of game. Now, the platforms that it's going to be released on is interesting. It's coming to the PS4, the PS5, and it's also coming to iOS. So basically how this game works is you have a real toy car, like the game, I guess it'll come with a car package inside of it, and you drive that real toy car around your house, but there's a camera on top of the car, and the camera, whatever the camera sees, that's what gets displayed onto your screen, and then on your screen, there's like a bunch of effects and different things put up. If you think back just two or three years ago when Mario Kart Live came out, it's literally the same thing as that, just with Hot Wheels. I love when companies try these like cool little innovative ideas. It gives me flashbacks to the old days, like again with Mario Kart Live, but then even further back with things like Skylanders. Even though it's a small thing, like a small little innovation, I like when games and companies try something different like this. Even if it is just a small little gimmick, I still find this stuff cool and I'll definitely be picking this one up. Now, this next story is juicy. And before we get into this one, I just wanted to apologize. I know usually I take more time to linger on a lot of the stories during weekly GCAP and get more of my thoughts on the stuff, but these last two stories are going to take me quite a while to get through, which is why I've been trying to like pick up the pace and, you know, fly through the other stories in this episode. I don't mind recording for longer, but you know, at the same time, I don't want to make you guys shoot through like a 30 to 45 minute video. <laughs> I hope y'all are sitting down because you're not going to believe this next story. It's something we've never talked about before. Are you ready? Like I said, you'd never believe this, but there's more drama happening with the Microsoft and Activision acquisition? What? Jokes aside, the last time that we talked about this just a week or two ago, I was saying, hey, yeah, it's probably just going to be like another week or two till we're talking about it. And here we are. It's been two weeks. Basically, the CMA in the UK is looking to block the Microsoft's Activision acquisition. There's multiple reasons for this, but the main reason that they're stating this time is that Microsoft can monopolize the cloud gaming scene. Like, do we, can, can we just take a minute to acknowledge how stupid this is? If they would end up having a monopoly over the cloud gaming scene, it would be nobody, it would literally be nobody's fault. You want to know why Google Stadia decided to shut themselves down. Microsoft is the only one that's actually been making active moves towards the cloud gaming thing. Like, sure, NVIDIA has GeForce now, but it's not like they're actively pushing it or doing a lot with it. You know, like sometimes they'll add some games to the roster, but that's the extent of it. They're not doing what Microsoft is doing. Microsoft sees it as the future. They're trying to do bigger things with it. Meanwhile, no other company is. So if Microsoft ends up having a monopoly over the cloud gaming scene, then it's simply because there's very few other companies that are actually trying to do anything with it. Like, sure, there's some smaller companies here and there that are experimenting with it, but otherwise, all of the bigger companies have either given up on it or are just simply not trying to do anything with it. Like, Sony's streaming service, that thing still sucks and they haven't tried to improve it at all. Nintendo Switches, that one's really rough as well. And then, as I said before, Stadia basically just shut themselves down. NVIDIA GeForce hasn't tried to do anything big with theirs because, again, I mean, they really don't need to. Their service, actually, GeForce now, I would say, is my favorite out of any of the cloud gaming services. I don't really do cloud gaming often, if ever. I just kind of mess with it here and there to see if it's improved at all since the last time that I tried it, just so then I can spread the word to you guys and let you know which services are actually worth using. And then, yeah, like I said, Microsoft's the only one that's been trying to do anything with it. The first time that I used their cloud gaming service, it wasn't too hot, but the last couple times that I messed around with it, it seems to be getting better. So, furthermore, the CMA has concerns that Microsoft acquiring Activision could be bad for not just consumers, but other companies in the business. But hey, luckily, the CMA had some suggestions for Microsoft as to how they 
could calm those concerns. I'm just gonna read this off to you. And then immediately after, I'll address why Microsoft is probably gonna choose none of the above on this one. So the first suggestion was to separate and saw off the Call of Duty part of the business. And if not that, their second suggestion was to separate the Activision and Blizzard segments and potentially selling one or both parts off. They referred to these as structural remedies they could look towards. So let's just get this out of the way. When it comes to the console and PC scene, I'm pretty sure all of us are aware that Call of Duty is the big money maker that Microsoft was most likely looking toward when they initially decided to try and acquire Activision, at least in terms of the PC and console scene. And that's not to mention other games like Overwatch and Diablo. And then obviously when you look at the Blizzard side of Activision, that's when you get into the mobile stuff. Like again, well, Diablo, like a Diablo Immortal. And then you have games like Candy Crush developed by King. So yeah, when you take that into consideration, it's pretty obvious that Microsoft wanted like all of Activision and Blizzard because obviously again, you know, you got big hitters like Call of Duty, Overwatch, Diablo for the console and PC. And then the mobile stuff, well, Blizzard is behind some of the biggest mobile games and some of the biggest cash cows in mobile game history. And obviously as Microsoft has stated before, they are trying to get more into the mobile scene, get out to more players. So if they had to sell off Blizzard, that would seriously put a dent in their plans that they had for the mobile gaming stuff. And then furthermore, selling off Call of Duty, is that a joke? Of course they're not gonna do that. Do you guys know how much money Call of Duty makes? Let's put it this way. The amount of money that it costs to buy Activision as a whole, just a couple years of Call of Duty and they'd be making that back. Just to put into perspective, MW2, which has just come out, that game surpassed $800 million after being out on the market in not even one week. I don't believe that we have any updated revenue numbers for that one, but that's still insane. And you can bet it's only gone up and up considering that the shop has been out for a while now and the battle pass. However, that is not all. The CMA also suggested some behavioral remedies that Microsoft could look towards. Those being making certain games and IP multi-platform in the future, even if they're under Microsoft's ownership. And I think that we all know that they're referring to Call of Duty staying on PlayStation even after Microsoft would acquire Activision, which I find that funny because Microsoft has actually offered both Nintendo and Sony multiple contracts at this point. The one for Sony spanning literally a decade ensuring them that they could keep Call of Duty. Sony is the one that refused to accept the offer just because Jim Ryan can't swallow his pride and would instead rather to keep making hypocritical PR statements. The way I see it, I think that Microsoft is going to look towards the behavioral remedy route. Considering what we discussed earlier about, you know, their original intentions from buying Activision Blizzard in the first place, if they took any of the structural remedy routes, it would completely dismantle any of their previous strategies that they had. Don't you guys worry, I'll be keeping you updated on this as it evolves. But as of now, things are definitely getting a little heated with this whole acquisition thing. Furthermore, Bobby Kotick, the head of Activision, responded saying the UK risks becoming Death Valley if it blocks the Microsoft deal. Basically saying that if they follow through with pushing back against this deal as they are now, they could risk bigger companies, including Microsoft, just not wanting to work with or even do business inside of the UK anymore. See, I don't know how likely it would be that either one, Microsoft would stop doing business there, or two, the CMA would go that far as to lose access to Microsoft and their products as a business in the UK. I really have a hard time believing that things would go that far, but I mean, Bobby Kotick does have a point. If they keep pushing back against this deal as hard as they are, do you think other big tech companies are going to look like that and be like, oh yeah, let's go do business with them? No, it's going to be like, uh, yeah, those are the same guys that try to shut down like all the big deals going through there. Let's, uh, let, let's revert our efforts somewhere else. Because I'll tell you this, the CMA has not been kind to this whole acquisition deal the whole time it's been going on. Like I said last time, I'm sure we'll be talking about this again in a week or two. So as soon as we have some updates on the story, I'll let you guys know immediately. Now for our last story, this one isn't necessarily a story, but rather a recap of the Nintendo Direct that happened yesterday at the time of me recording this, which would have been two days ago for you guys. Basically, Nintendo had a big Direct and honestly, it was amazing. This was one of the better Directs. It almost seems like they took a look at that Xbox Dev Direct that happened not that long ago. And they were like, hey, we can do that too. We can do Shadow Drops. We can make big hype online. And that's actually exactly what they did. I have a lot, and I mean a lot, of games to talk about. Some that are fresh announcements, some that are just like things that were announced before but finally got release dates or were just mentioned again. I don't want to waste any more time in this. This is honestly an intimidating size list of games that I have to talk about. So please, please bear with me. This is like 30 plus games that we have to talk about. All right, so we're just going to hit you with titles, release dates, and that's it. I'll stop to talk about the ones that really stick out in my mind, but otherwise, we're just going to go. Minecraft Legends coming April 18th, 2023. Blank Blanc, I think is how you say it. February 14th, 2023. It has a cool art style. Kind of looks like a simple journey type game, if you guys remember that one from the PS3. Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection coming April 14th, 2023. Have a Nice Death coming March 22nd, 2023. This is like a 2D action platformer. Kind of looks like a Hollow Knight or a Dead Cells type game. Looks pretty fun. And then this next one was 
was actually one of the shadow drops from the show that being wbsce baseball power pros like i said it was available the same day as the direct it's literally just wii sports baseball except the whole game is just wii sports baseball it looks fun but just know before downloading it it literally is just wii sports baseball <laughs> disney dreamlight valley is getting a new realm update in april 2023 no specific date yet tales of symphonia remaster coming february 17 2023 pikmin 4 coming july 21st 2023 advance wars one plus two boot camp coming april 21st 2023 i just realized i've been saying 2023 this whole time but all of these games are coming out in 2023 so i think i'm just gonna drop the 2023 part to save us a couple seconds octopath traveler 2 is coming february 24th however there was a demo that went out immediately after the direct so you can go download that right now and try the game but the full game won't be releasing until the 24th disney illusion island coming july 28th and this is like a mickey mouse looking platformer it has like the og art style from the 1930s cartoons i actually really like that aesthetic and style this is definitely one that i'll be picking up it, it looks pretty interesting the etrian odyssey origins collection coming june 1st if you guys are familiar with the persona games this is developed by the same people atlas this is just some of their older titles getting the remastered treatment it looks pretty solid samba de amigo coming summer 2023 this looks to be like a dancing slash rhythm game next up we got fashion dreamer coming at some point 2023 tron identity coming april 11th ghost trick phantom detective coming in the summer deca police coming at some point this year bayonetta origins sarazette and the lost demon coming march 17th harmony the fall of reverie coming in june we love katamari reroll plus royal reverie coming june 2nd sea of stars coming august 29th omega strike coming april 27th kirby's return to dreamland deluxe i'm so excited for this one kirby's return to dreamland is one of my favorite kirby games that is coming february 24th bait and kato is coming in the summer natsuman 20th century summer vacation coming in summer but only for japan fantasy life i the girl who steals time coming at some point this year i don't believe there was a release date for it it's a sequel to the 3ds game fantasy life which i actually really like that game back in the day it kind of combines animal crossing with action rpg elements the best way i could describe it is part life sim part zelda it's pretty fun there also seems to be some cool like time traveling mechanics in this one so i'll definitely be checking this out professor layton and the new world of steam coming at some point 2023 love to see it fire emblem engage dlc i don't believe it got an official release date i was going through all of the games double checking all of my info so if there's any game that i didn't include a release date for but did in fact actually get one please let me know in the comments but again i don't believe this one actually got a release date yet however this will include new heroes new story mode stuff similar to the other games that nintendo has been putting out lately it's going to have different waves of dlc in particular wave 4 will feature a new story called the fell xenolog next up we got dead cells return to castlevania coming march 6th volume 3 of xenoblade chronicles 3 expansion pass will be releasing february 15th splatoon 3 dlc there's going to be two waves to this one wave 1 will be coming out in the spring and this will feature the inkopolis map from splatoon 1 and then in wave 2 not exactly sure when wave 2 is coming out i think that'll just be you know at some point later this year it's gonna have a new expansion to the story mode i didn't even get to play splatoon 3 yet i heard the story mode was pretty solid so i'm actually really excited to dive into that one mario kart 8 dlc way 4 coming at some point this spring if somebody would have told me back in mario kart 8's release that it would be supported all the way through 2023 i would not have believed them but here we are that's not a bad thing though mario kart 8 easily one of my favorite mario kart games it is absolutely amazing the next shadow drop metroid prime remaster it's kind of a shadow drop so it was shadow drop the same day as the direct digitally but it won't be coming out physically until february 22nd so if you want to try the game now you can go to the eShop and download it however personally i'm going to be waiting till the 22nd and then i'll pick up a physical copy i have so much nostalgia for the original metroid prime it is not even funny i put so many hours into this game on the gamecube so seeing this game return and it's 16 by 9 hd glory just it makes my heart happy and then the final one obviously this isn't a new announcement but it is zelda tears of the kingdom it will be coming may 12th 2023 and we got to talk about this one the game is going to be retailing for 69.99 aka 70 dollars now look when it comes to microsoft and sony they have an excuse okay they're developing next generation games those are quite expensive to make produce the whole shebang but nintendo doesn't have an excuse they've they're on the same system that they had since 2017 when games were still 60 dollars i mean i understand with inflation and everything Thing, $60 back then most definitely is $70 today but it still feels a little tone deaf just considering the fact that again the only games that have costed $70 in recent times are the next generation ones coming out on PS5 and Series X 
Whereas Nintendo Switch, I mean, let's be honest, that wasn't even next generation at the time that it came out. That thing was still performing like a hybrid between a 7th and 8th gen system, even though it came out smack dab in the middle of the 8th generation. Again, the Switch isn't bad by any means, but $70? Uh, uh, I don't know about that one, Chief. That's not to say I have anything against the game over that, though. I'm still quite excited for this game. I just feel like $70 for a Switch game is a bit much. That also raises the question, what happens going forward? Is every Nintendo Switch game now gonna be $70? Like the next Mario game, will that be $70? The next Metroid game, is that gonna be $70? Pokemon, $70? I mean, heck, if the next Pokemon game comes out and it performs the way that Scarlet and Violet did at like 15 FPS with glitches all over the place, yeah, no thank you. I'm gonna hold on to my $70. Really curious about that, but of course, only time will tell. I'm hoping that not every Nintendo release going forward is gonna be $70, because if you guys know Nintendo, it takes them a while to drop the prices on their games, and not only that, they rarely ever do sales, so when a game comes out and it's $70, you're gonna be paying $70 for the game no matter when you try to get it for at least like three or four years. Sometimes we get lucky and they feel a little generous and they'll put a relatively recent release, and by relatively recent, I mean something that came out like two years ago. They'll put it on sale around the holidays, but that's the extent of what you can expect from Nintendo. So if you're not willing to fork out $70 for Zelda, which honestly, I don't blame you, I wouldn't either, then unfortunately, you might have to wait just a bit longer to check this one out. Mid-editing G here, I have no idea how I forgot to mention this, but along with all the other games and DLCs announced, they also announced a a new update to the Nintendo Switch Online service, which will include Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. Now, please just bear with me as I rattle off all of the games announced for the service. So the Game Boy games that were announced are as follows. Tetris, Super Mario Land 2, 6 Golden Coins, The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening, DX, Gargoyles Quest, Game & Watch, Gallery 3, Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare, Metroid 2, Return of Samus, Warrior Land 3, and Kirby's Dream Land. Now, just a heads up, you can play the Game Boy games if you just have Nintendo Switch Online, but you're gonna need the expansion pack if you want to experience the Game Boy Advance games. The Game Boy Advance games that will be available at launch are as follows. The Legend of Zelda, Minish Cap, Super Mario Advance 4, WarioWare Incorporated, Mega Micro Game, Kuru 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 Ren, Mario Kart Super Circuit, and Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. These games will also support local and online play with friends. There will also be more games available in the future that they tease. These games being The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Seasons and Ages, Pokemon Trading Card Game, Kirby Tilt and Tumble, Metroid Fusion, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, Fire Emblem, F-Zero maximum velocity and golden sun again i have no idea how i forgot to mention this when i was recording i literally had it written down on my notes and especially when you consider i was very hyped for this as soon as i saw the announcement but at the same time i did record this after i had already been sitting in my computer for roughly 12 hours so that may have something to do with it that's just part of running four youtube channels i guess some things just kind of get jumbled up in your memory sometimes with that being said that was a lot of talking a lot of gaming news to cover especially regarding new releases but i'm just glad that i was able to catch you guys up on everything like i said this is weekly gcap the the only source you'll ever need to catch up on all the gaming news from the last week. And that being said, sometimes it requires me to sit here and record myself talking for an hour straight. And sometimes those long recording sessions are like today, where literally half an hour of that is me just sitting here trying to say all of these titles and release dates back to back. But anyway, now I want to hear from you guys down below. What do you think about all the stories this week? Whether it be Crossfire X shutting down, Coalition working on the next Gears game. How are you feeling about Hogwarts Legacy? Are you going to be picking up the new Xbox controller? How do you feel about the Nintendo Direct? How would you rate it? Whatever it is, whatever Whatever you're thinking, I'd love to hear from you guys. But that's that. Like I said at the beginning, you guys can catch me here every single Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern. I'll always be here to catch you guys up on all the gaming news from the last week. Thank you as always for taking the time out of your day to watch these episodes. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing day and an amazing weekend. Stay beautiful. I love you all. Peace.